Pakistani for a better life. The Ram uh, of the Ram Charit Manas was Sita Ji's Deen Dayal. She, he was the friend of the poor during the entire immigration period which witnessed social, religious, economic, political, and cultural changes and challenges in India and often reflected in the later destinations in the diaspora. However, Sri Ram remained the same constant, colossal Maryada Purushottam, the Deen Dayal, the Nath, Deen Dayal Biridu um, Sambhari, Harahu Nath Mama Sankatabhari, where a figure none less than the Divine Mother Sita alludes to his fame as the friend of the poor and the indentured Indians who went to all parts of the diaspora were poor. They were exploited. They had miserable lives. And slowly, over the 156 years that we're in South Africa, and of course in other parts of the diaspora, we had to improve life. Sri Ram was the Lord whom Sitaji implores to remove her great ordeal when she was under stress. Thus, Sri Ram was accessible to all on the basis of devotion and despair. Um, the immediate forebears of the Girmityas were infused with the sentiments of the Ramcharit Manas because as we know, Tulsidas Ji himself had traveled the areas and did and disseminated his, the Ram story and, the Ram, and Ram Bhakti amongst, those, amongst the people who, and from those people, there were those who emigrated from India. So, the Dohas and Chopais were, um, uh, sorry, um, the Girmityas were infused with the sentiments of the Ramcharit Manas and interacted with this value system naturally, like breathing and executing daily chores. The Dohas and Chopais, oft repeated by the Girmityas during their tough times, their travails, where the efflorescence of this deep-rooted philosophy, spirituality, and faith as evinced a direct Citation of the Ramcharit Manas was popular to affirm integrity and duty. Ragukularithi sada chali ai prana jau bara vachan na jau. I'm not saying that that still remains today. Um, life has changed. And the extent of this fusion of Ram Sita consciousness, that's the Ram ethos, as enunciated by Tulsi Das in Siya Rama Me Sabajagajani. Karu Pranam Jori Jukapani can be felt when one considers that Ram and Ramnam govern the lives of the Girmityas from the time of rising from, this, from sleep to the time of surrendering to slumber. Um, I'm going to skip a lot. The Girmitya Hindus brought the building blocks of Ram Bhakti in the form of the Ram Charit Manas. Those were the building blocks of our lives, of our, the lives of my grandparents. Um, at, and the descendants created a magnificent edifice to the glory of Sri Ram. This is evolution on a positive level. Um, the diaspora devotees of Sri Ram had also formulated a similar experience. For example, in Fiji, it is said the great Tulsi Ramayan delivers the medicine of immortality to the foreign dwelling men and women. Now, can we imagine when our, when my, our great grandparents reached South Africa, we are third generation South Africans, um, and it goes up to sixth generation, obviously being there for 156 years, or if you take Trinidad and Mauritius, for, for example, exploitation, no schools, people, the community, through the Ramayan Sabhas, when they used to sit in the evenings, there was no entertainment. The only thing you could do was recite, talk about Ramcharit Manas because it reminded you of India. 
That was the only thing that they could do. So Ram Bhakti, the seeds of Ram Bhakti were brought to South Africa with the Girmetyas and gone to the rest of the diaspora as well. Let me just say that in those days, the, the Maliks, right, the oppressors, did not give the Indians any education. Through community, the community got together and built schools. And you'll be surprised to know that schools were built of the Ramayan Sabhas that were formed underneath trees. Today, not far away from where I live, 156 years after the Indians went to South Africa, we still have a government school called Sri Ramayan Sabha, government-aided Indian school. And it's not only the Hindus that study there. People from all communities study their children from all communities, and we're happy about that. The Girmitya, the Hindi, the Girmitya Hindi is already imbued with the nectar-like uh, sentiments of Ram devotion, formulated their own responses in the spirit of Ramcharit Manas and Sri Ram. The South African Girmityas found strength and direction in their daily lives characterized uh, by hardships thus. Rama ka naam liyeja aur apna kaam kiyeja. That's what they did in the fields. The evolution of Ram Bhakti in South Africa was a natural continuity in the lives of the Girmityas. We were not separate from Ram. They, we, we, um, it is, well, it has been said that the Girmityas that went to the diaspora were unlettered. But I don't believe that because they went with Ramcharit Manus in their hearts and in their mind. If they didn't have an actual copy of the Ramcharit Manus, there is lots of uh, evidence that Ramcharit Manus was actually written by hand in the diaspora, and also they took it with them in, in the oral tradition. The oral tradition amongst the Hindus anywhere in the world is very, very, very powerful from the early days. Within the orthodox Sanatani religious system, Sri Ram was a special figure of divinity and majesty who was a real a friend in need. He was Dukkha Kasathi, and also one who experienced suffering. Ram Chandra Tihu Loka Ke Malik, Un Parabhi Bipati Pare. Sri Ram had also gone on exile. So if Ram could bear it, the Girmityas all, always believed if Sri Ram, Sita, and Lakshman could bear forest life, could bear exile, could bear the wars, could go through a rough patch, why not us, right? And for the, for the Girmityas in South Africa, Sri Ram is definitely Bhagwan, and to their descendants. He is looked upon as the divine, as God. Of course, you would get a small percentage of people anywhere in the world who might have objections to that, but that's okay. Uh, very quickly, and you can see that I'm just trying to, yes, a very interesting point that I'd like to speak to. Um, I told you that there were no uh, schools in the early days. Do you know that they used the Ramcharit Manas lines or the text, uh, as a textbook to study Hindi? in the early days. So they learned and became lettered through the Ramcharit Manas. Obviously, over the centuries, English gained importance and for jobs and as uh, our, the descendants were educated, um, we began to lose the language, um, the Hindi language. And today, we have the Hindi Shiksha Sang that runs in South Africa that is trying to promote um, uh, Hindi to, to get people to learn Hindi at a decent level. We even have a Hindi radio station, by the way. Aap you can even go listen via computer, audio streaming. Hamari tuti puti Hindi mein aap sun sakte hain. Right? Um, and today, many of the students that come to the Sang, to the Hindi Shiksha Sang, to study Hindi, want to study it because they want to read Ramcharit Manas.
because Sri Ram and Ram Charitmanas means so much to us. But do not let me give you the wrong impression. We are worried about the youth, and I'm worried about how we're going to engage them for the future, because life is changing, and I'm hoping that we can harness technology to keep them engaged and in focus. Um, the Ram Charitmanas was scripture and constantly recited. Um, yes, we spoke about uh, spiritual values. To the Hindus in general, and the Girmitiyas in particular, Sri Ram was God incarnate, as, as my research would show. Because uh, Gumashtaji had asked me to speak about my research here, and I know I've, um, I'm speaking about the evolution of Ram Bhakti, which is obviously uh, part of my research. But there's no time for me to give you the statistics and exactly what percentage of people feel in a certain way and things like that. But let's see what I can do in the, in the time that I have. Um, Yes, the immortality of the Ramayana with its relevance in different approaches and eras is due to the fact that the Ramayana is a living text and tradition continuously nourished by the insights and experiences of Hindu communities throughout the ages. And that comes from somebody in Trinidad by Professor Rambachan, brilliant scholar on Hinduism, Ramayana, and other religions, I think, as well. The challenge is to understand and become part of this tradition. When Valmiki wrote about Brahma's boon to the, Ram, uh, to the Ramayana, Yavat Thasyanti Gireyaha Saritascha Mahitale Tavad Ramayan Katha Lokeshu Pracharishyati, that the Ramayana will survive and it's proving to be such. As I said, um, we've had. Kathakars like Murari Bapu who've come, people like them inspire the uh, Hindus back home to remain on track. It was absolutely wonderful to hear how Murari Bapu did Ram Katha in the Vatican. And then of late we've seen pictures of Bapu doing uh, uh, Ram Katha at a temple foundation ceremony in Abu Dhabi. So it's Ram Charitmanas is really going beyond barriers. Um, so it is, you know, um, I have to... May kindly conclude. Yes. Um, I think it was a little earlier when um, Dr. Y.P. Singh spoke about Ram Leela in Trinidad. Of course, I've learned, learned a lot from Trinidad. And he said something about, you know, uh, it's so exciting Yes, Ram Leela is very exciting, as you will see from the next presentation. But I can tell you, he said that in Mauritius, you might listen to Sundar Khan and go off, and it's over. I don't think it's over. Because the bhakti, gyan, shraddha, vishwas that you would get from, doing, from watching a Ram Leela and being involved in the performance is no less than what you would get in Mauritius or in South Africa. You have genuine devotees in these countries. So, Dr. Y.P. Singh, I wouldn't agree with you on that one. Uh, and I've learned a lot from Mauritius when it comes to Ramayana as well. Um, it is... All right. Um, in, the, in the past, we, um, we know that we've had a university, department was closed, where we had lots of Ramayana research being done. Unfortunately, um, that's not there anymore. But I'd like to conclude. Yes, there was one thing. I hope I'd like to, um, to say something that, is it Dr. Jeffrey? Yes, that he said. He, he spoke about Vedic studies. And I hope that we all can make Ramcharit Manas a weapon of mass devotion. Please, we have to do that, and we have to start spreading that in the world. And conferences like this give, uh, give us the opportunity to do so. Uh, just to conclude, I would like to say that Kak Bushundi was probably right. The devotees of Sri Ram 
of which there are many in South Africa and in the diaspora, they perpetuate his glory and divinity. The increasing number in devotees and the frequency of gatherings such as this conference to adore Sri Ram maintain the presence of the ethos of Sri Ram in the world and beyond. His eminence is palpable whilst transcendental. And my final sentence, uh, sentence Tulsi Das's engagement with Sri Ram, to the exclusion of all else, earned him accolades such as Lok Nayak, Trikalagya, Trikaladarshi, Santa Shiromani, amongst others. The natural corollary to this is that the Ramcharit Manas has become Kaljai. It depends upon you and I to keep it that way, not just serving time, but now vigorously conquering time. Jai Shri Ram. Jai Shri Ram. Thank you. Uh, she said, Ramcharit Manas is the weapon of mass destruction.